every single demon moon has suddenly turned into Hashira. How strong would they be? What would be their Hashira title? And which breathing style would they use? Well, let's find out. Rui, the spider Hashira. Rui is arguably Muzan's favorite lower moon, and he currently occupies the position of lower moon 5. As a Hashira, he would use spider breathing. This breathing style would be derived from insect breathing and would be very similar to it. Being the spider Hashira, he would be capable of killing demons using spider poison, similar to how Shinobu, the insect pillar, kills demons. Like spiders, his breathing techniques would give him the ability to spawn webs using various forms. These webs would be very efficient in capturing demons and would be so strong and sticky that most demons, except the 12 Kizuki, wouldn't be capable of breaking free. Due to his small stature, he would be incapable of decapitating demons' heads. So Rui would instead use his spider breathing techniques to poison the demons and kill them off. Hmm, this sounds really similar. In terms of personality, he would be obsessed with always being around his family and would do everything in his power to always protect them. He would also view all of his fellow Hashira as family and would do anything he could to protect them. His appearance as a Hashira would be very different than his demon appearance. He would adorn his body with spider tattoos, looking like a delinquent. Also, his white robe would be engraved with spider web drawings. Overall, his appearance would be representative of his spider breathing technique. He would definitely be a very strong and skilled demon slayer, but compared to the other Hashira, he would be the weakest. Enmu, the Dream Hashira. Lower Moon 1 Demon Enmu is an eccentric and very loyal demon who possesses deep admiration for the demon king Muzan. Should he become a Hashira, he would hold a Dream Pillar title. His dream breathing techniques would be similar to hypnosis, and he would be capable of activating it with his hands without using a sword. He would be overconfident and rely solely on his dream breathing abilities to hypnotize demons and leave them vulnerable, waiting to be killed. Nonetheless, after incapacitating demons with his techniques, he'll have to use his blade to decapitate them. His dream breathing techniques can be activated through a myriad of hand gestures such as clapping, waving, or clicking. Whenever he activates his dream breathing techniques, it causes demons to become disoriented, lose balance, and become sleepy. The strength of his hypnotic abilities would be dependent on the form he uses. The first form of his dream breathing would only have a small hypnotic effect, and the final form would have the most powerful effects, which he would have to use for more powerful demons such as the 12 Kizuki. He would be the only one amongst the pillars who would adorn himself in corporate attire, similar to how Muzan was dressed the first time Tanjiro confronted him. He would also have a confident attitude and persona, and would possess deep admiration and respect for Ubuyashiki, the leader of the Demon Slayer Corps. Daki and Gyutaro, the Blood Hashiras. Daki and Gyutaro are the only demon-turned Hashiras on this list who share the same breathing technique, blood breathing. Both of them would always travel and fight together as companions. Being the blood pillars, they would be capable of manipulating the blood of their opponents. This would be one of the strongest breathing techniques, but there'd be one huge downside. This technique can only be activated once they cut their opponents. Another great ability of blood breathing would be that any injury they inflict on weaker demons would be incapable of healing, and such demons would lose a lot of blood in battle. Daki would obviously be the weaker among the duo, with Gyutaro being the stronger one. Their teamwork would be on an entirely different level than any other pillar duo, and they would both play various roles in luring, capturing, and killing demons. Daki, being extremely pretty as a human, would appear weak, harmless, and vulnerable to demons. This would serve to lure unsuspecting demons to try and devour her, only to end up being killed by her instead. And if the demon is too strong, Gyutaro would step in and finish the prey. Gyutaro would have a very slim physique, with scars all over his body, a result of numerous battles. He would have more hatred toward demons than any other pillar, and would vent his anger and frustration on any demon he came across. Daki, being the beauty she is, would be constantly dressed in kimono accompanied by an umbrella which she would wield like a sword at times. Gyutaro, on the other hand, being the carefree person he is, would always work around shirtless and looking haggard. Gyoko, the Water Hashira Gyoko's skill in pottery would make him amass a lot of fortune, a fortune that would make him the richest demon slayer. As a Hashira, he would possess water breathing. His water breathing techniques would be very similar to Giyu's, having a large set of techniques to choose from, with some forms being for offense and the others for defense. Yoko would also be the only Hashira who would walk around with a huge pot of his own making strapped around his back. He would also carry his two longswords inside his pot. He would have a modest personality despite his riches, and the only thing he'd pay extreme importance to is his artistic work. This is why he would also be known as the artist among the pillars, and demons would be scared to utter his name aloud. He would hold a grudge against anyone who doesn't appreciate his art, and this is exactly the reason why he hates demons. He sees them as beings unable to see beauty in the world, and thinks he is doing them a favor by killing them. Also, if anyone breaks a piece of his art, he would hunt them down and kill them, be it a demon or a human. Hantengu, the Sound Hashira As a Hashira, Hantengu would possess sound breathing. His sound breathing techniques would be activated by swinging his blade, and he would be capable of performing only three different forms. 
This would make him a Hashira with the fewest forms in the entire Demon Slayer core. The first form would produce sonic sound waves that can disorient demons and affect their sense of hearing. In the second form, demons would feel as if they were about to blow up and would begin to bleed from their ears. The third form would let him repel all sorts of attacks using supersonic sound waves to make a barrier around himself. All of his forms would be harmful only to demons and wouldn't hurt humans, no matter how close they are to him. Hantengu, as a Hashira, would become a highly spiritual person with a strong sense of justice and kindness. He would always walk around carrying spiritual objects such as candles, books, and necklaces. After killing a demon, he would feel compassion and pray for it, similar to what Tanjiro is already doing in the show. This is because he believes all demons were once humans and that they can't control their bloodlust for human flesh. He would also be dressed in a spiritual robe, just like a priest. He would talk very little and overall be a mysterious character. Being covered in a robe at all times, his body physique would remain unknown. Akaza, the Destruction Hashira Akaza would probably be a fan favorite Hashira. Being a martial artist, he would be the only Hashira who uses only his fists while fighting demons. He would not possess a sword. Yes, he'll be that strong. He would be the master of destructive breathing technique. This breathing technique would amplify his strength upon activation. With this breathing style, he'd be capable of punching off the heads of any demons, even upper moons. Destructive Breath would possess 10 forms which would increase his strength accordingly, with the first form doubling his base strength and the 10th form increasing his base strength by 20 times. This would make him by far the strongest Hashira in terms of physical strength. Aside from increasing his strength, his stamina and durability would also be increased according to the hierarchy of the forms we previously mentioned. Thus, he could even tank punches from Upper Moon Demons. Being a martial artist, he would always walk around barefoot and train a lot. He would always be shirtless, and he'd have a very muscular build and cheerful attitude. Since he doesn't use a sword to fight, he would have Nichiren rings around his fingers. With this, when he punches a demon and beheads them, the demon won't be able to regenerate. We can safely assume that he would be the same as he was before Kaizo and Koyuki were killed. A light-hearted and honest person always ready to help and protect others. Doma, the Ice Hashira. Doma would be an extremely flamboyant, eccentric, and flashy Hashira, similar to how Tengen is in the series. He would possess ice breathing techniques. He would always volunteer to go to battles whenever the opportunity was presented. This is because he enjoys killing demons and testing his abilities. When using his breathing techniques, steam would emanate from his sword, and he'd be capable of using several ice resembling moves. For instance, he'd be capable of shooting ice projectiles at his targets. He'd also be capable of temporarily immobilizing his opponents whenever he slashes them with his sword. He would do this by freezing their body whenever they sustained a cut from him. The time a demon would remain frozen would depend on the demon's strength. In essence, the weakest demons would be frozen for longer periods, while the stronger demons would be frozen for extremely short periods, or may not even freeze at all. In terms of defense, he'd be able to erect temporary ice walls to block incoming attacks. He'd always be donned in royal apparel, and he'd be easily distinguishable even in big crowds thanks to his flashy looks. Kokushibo, the Moon Hashira. Although it was never officially stated that Michikatsu was a Hashira, he was definitely strong enough to be one. His breathing technique, the Moon Breathing, is the second strongest breathing technique in the entire series. Because of this, he would be by far the strongest pillar in the current generation. Also, he'd be the only Hashira with access to a transparent world and selfless state. This ability would allow him to battle even some upper moons with relative ease. Assuming Yorichi is still alive in this alternative universe, he'd be the only human capable of defeating Kokoshibo in combat. His moon breathing techniques were shown to be capable of sending several attacks at the same time. Hence, Kokushibo as a Hashira should be capable of fighting multiple demons simultaneously. He would, of course, still retain his jealous personality, and he'd always strive to be the strongest. He'd always search for stronger and stronger opponents to fight and would see this as a means of training. However, being the wielder of the great moon breathing technique, he would always prevail in battle against any demons, even upper moons. Hashira Kokushiba would possess a very long sword, and he'd be dressed like he always is, in his black and purple kimono. Click on this video where we explain what would happen if all Hashira turned into demons. Come on, click now!